And I thought it is proper as a presiding officer in adjudicating this matter to set down the principles which govern the precept concept of cross-examination and the response from a witness and the question asked by counsel. Well, do you know what I thought as somebody who's been watching these proceedings for a while? I thought it would be a great idea to read this comment. And you know what? I respect your comments, guys. I truly, truly do. So I always appreciate it um, when your comments are thought provoking. And of course, this is our platform. So I'm going to share this comment. So let's get into it. The comment begins with, I am sorry, this is long, but it's necessary to indicate where this case is right now. By all standards, the judge must throw this case out, considering the following. One, DNA plainly acquitted the five accused. And that was months ago, guys. The DNA said, who are these people? Two, the Spaza occupants saw a gun with a wheel as opposed to the 9mm. Yes, yes, yes. And I believe the defense is going to have their ballistic expert finally come back and give us a report. I cannot wait for that day. But let's go on to point number three. So, <laughs> the dreaded cell phone records, guys. Okay. Point number three. Cell phone, cell phone, cell phone records. Oh, let me try and read this because there's a typo. So let me see how it's supposed to read. Cell phone records do not place the five accused near the crime scene instead same words cooked tempered and altered with can't tell the fake from the original <sighs> accused one phone was gallivanting all over while he was in prison <laughs> i think that's accused number two again it made and received calls even after it was allegedly been seized for the second time. Yes, this is accused number two, Ubongani Danzi, right? Ubongani Danzi's phone. Ubongani Danzi was arrested on the 16th of June, 2020. I'll, I never forget the date. I'm like Ngomezul, okay? Anytime you say, when was Ubongani Danzi arrested? That one I can answer because it's always what? June 16. And I, I, somehow that date stuck in my head that that's the date they chose to arrest, um, you know, Ubongani Danzi as a youth in South Africa. But you know what? I digress. So Wangani Danzi was arrested on the 16th of June, 2020, okay? All the way, and he had his phone in his possession, according to the state. He had his phone in his possession all the way, okay? June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February 8th, when they discovered that phone with him, okay? That's what this comment is saying. And then it says, then even after they had seized the phone, okay? That phone was gallivanting the whole time, but this guy is in prison, right? And then it says, accused number two's phone was gallivanting all over while he was in prison. Again, it made and received calls even after it was allegedly been seized for the second time. When they now finally found it on the 8th of February 2021, that call, that phone was still, it was still working, okay? Who made these calls? Then goes on to say, calls between Kelly Kumalo and Ngani were planted. This, we really see it with who? Advocate Ngomalo, like he points that out. He shows us that in Stain's document, Mr. Stain's document, the timeline is not timelining. The call starts off, the call log, Kelly Kumalo's calls are at 9 a.m. And then it jumps to 10 p.m. And then it jumps back down to a an a.m. call. How is that possible and that the calls are not in chronological order? Okay. And therefore, you know, you can only conclude that that was planted in. The person who copied and pasted didn't, didn't think to wait until it was PM to do their paste. Then you go on to say, then the comment goes on to say, much is still going to come from the new exhibit submitted on Friday. You, you, you bet that's right. Of course. That's why they ended up a journey. Okay. That's why they ended up a journey because it was Gunini and part of the Gunini is all the occupants of the house is 205s are right there. 
comment goes on to say, and now the crux of the matter is, why was the state mum about the tampering of Section 205? Why didn't the state advise the court of this? Why did they let the defense cross-examine the witness without this knowledge, defeating the ends of justice? Because they assumed this, the defense team was stupid. Um, what was that word? Superfluous. Superfluous. <laughs> that word. Comment goes on to say, the new CD handed and registered as an exhibit Triple K5, I think it is. I think it's Triple K5. I think I wrote it down. Wait, let me check. Yeah. Oh, it's Triple K5G. Triple K5G. That's the new CD handed out on Friday. Okay. By Stein, who has to catch a flight at 2 p.m. And registered as an exhibit and the document handed to the Black Mamba, which Stein allegedly doesn't know, as a serious for the valoi i'm not sure what that's supposed to say comment goes on to say it actually says much it actually says much about the cooking gone wrong between the state and the police mm -hmm. somebody you know when you do your homework you gotta check it you gotta check it before you hand it in somebody didn't check their work valoi and Sivanda are now legally the accessory to the fact as it is clear and evident that there was a collaboration and collusion. Gomez word. Court was intentionally led astray. Allegedly. Let me just drop that one right there. Number four. Confession statements are confusing for people who planned and executed this murder. They contradict each other. They're not the same. But they're both part of the same crime. Number five. The AVL exonerated the accused one and two. It proved that the accused assaulted, violated, and forced to own up to something. Okay, it proved that the accused were assaulted, violated, and forced to own up to something they didn't do. Judge withdraw. The, oh, the judge must withdraw his decision that they must be included. Remember the trial within a trial? This is what this comment is about, that the judge must go back and withdraw his decision, which, by the way, if you remember, the judge did give himself leeway to go back if he chose to. Um, so he said it wasn't a judgment, it was a ruling. Okay, let's continue. Point number six. Whew. The last hope for the state is Mangena and the defense expert. However... Oh, yeah, the, the ballistic expert. Okay. The last hope for the state is Mangena and the ballistic expert. However, the height of the alleged shooter, the bullet cartridges, the gun by many, the gun by many and was never in the forensic bag. The cleaning, the tampering with the crime scene will be the focus of this cross-examination. And let me tell you, I can't wait for that. I cannot wait for Mr. Private Ballistic Expert to come on the stand. But it's it's going to be a long wait. It's going to be a long wait because we've got to go back to Pinky, guys. We've got to go back to Pinky, then validate with Stan. It's going to be another tennis ball match this weekend. You already know I'll be counting, okay? I'll be counting a score. Stay tuned for that. Comment goes on to say, yes, the gun and the alleged the gun and the alleged may be a match. However, Dumelo, Kelly Kumalo, Longwe Twala, and the identity kit expert mentioned the type of the weapon used as a 38 revolver special. Mr. Identity Kit Expert, how are they going to justify that one? He's an expert, right? Just like Stein is an expert. Stein is an expert of PDL, PDF, and Excel. And he's also an expert of no comment. And he's also an expert of keeping state resources when he has resigned. Can someone call Senzo Mnunu? Senzo Mnunu. Can someone call Senzo Mnunu and ask? So when police officers, anyone who works in the South African police services, resigns, resigns, they can keep all their hard drives and make copies of everything and go with it to retirement resignation whichever one it is we just want to clarify 
is this a security breach? Let me know in the comment section down below. The comment goes on to say, by the way, the defense witnesses has not been called yet. That part, we know Kelly Kumalo is top on that list. The comment ends with these words, guys. This warmed my heart. The comment says, I digress as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for this comment, lengthy as it was, but definitely, definitely worth, worth the read. Why? Because I thought it summarized where we are right now and we definitely need a summary so we can all just put our minds together and just see where we are. This is a definitely a developing story. Sadly, we're still far from ending the Senzo Meiwa trial. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts. I'll definitely want to engage with you there. You already know. If you've made it this far in the video, you absolutely have my heart. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're watching from outside the club, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, consider subscribing. Turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. My next upload is going to be about BDM. Okay, let me drop that one for you. And yeah, I'll let you know what goes on with that in that video. I didn't want to combine these two because it's two, two important topics, but I want to, I want them to live separately for search results. Okay. So we'll do that. Yeah. And you know what? If you're already subscribed to the channel, you absolutely have my heart. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Share this video with the last three people you chatted with today. You know, it's Sunday. Okay. Sundays is for what? Catching up on the Senza Mayua trial. Okay. But yeah. So if and also remember guys if you don't leave a comment i don't know you watched so please remember to drop me an emoji drop me an emoji down below and i'll be there to say hello to you as well as we get to know each other right here in the unfiltered family thanks so much for watching and i'll catch you on my next upload unfortunately these are the precepts regulations concepts customs and conventions which apply until maybe as people are saying we change the law in South Africa into what people are calling African law but unfortunately the law as it obtains today is formulated under our constitution and even under our Criminal Procedure Act, which we all know was written by Yemstra initially. We used to use Wigmo, who's an English jurist. But subsequently, the late Judge Yemstra coordinated these laws and drafted what was referred to as the Criminal Procedure Act, which, as I say, incorporates a modicum of how cross-examination should be conducted and how a, res a witness should be treated, how counsel should be treated, and how court officers should exercise decorum in this court.